Hey everybody, this is Dean and welcome to Photo Blue. Today I'm going to show you how to create a panorama photograph with On One. Uh, what we need to do is we shoot actually multiple photographs and we can stitch them together into a larger photograph which will be panoramic. So I've already shot some photographs here and I've actually shot two rows here. We're going to do one row first and then we'll show you what it's like to do two rows. So all you do to shoot these photographs, in this case I actually shot them vertically and I'm going to combine them and that gives us a little more uh, pixels and width on the height of the image. Uh, all you do is you pan from left to right uh, and you shoot and you make sure you overlap each image. Uh, you can do this handheld, which I did for the example, or you can do it with a tripod if you want to be more precise and and uh, reduce uh, some camera jitter or whatever. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the photographs, and this is uh, the the uh, first row. These other photographs are going to be the bottom row, which I'll show you in a second how we can combine multiple rows. So once we select the photographs we want to add to the panorama, we're going to right click and we're going to select create panorama. It's going to take a moment for it to process all of these together to give us the preview. All right, so it's given us a preview, but we have some options that we can actually change in this. Uh, the top option is the type and uh, it's auto by default, I believe. Uh, you have a choice of spherical and collage. If we switch it to collage, it will take it a minute to recalculate it. And you can see these lines uh, right around the edge here, if you look very closely. They're not smoothed out. So basically with the collage, it's not correcting for um, uh, inaccuracies of the way the panorama was shot and it's almost like laying down each image on each other and so if you have multiple images and they don't line up quite right it will show some imperfections in there so that's a kind of effect that you can get but generally you want it on auto or spherical and I think by default if you pick auto it's going to go to spherical alright the next uh, thing is how to handle the edges right now we have it on crop so it kind of cropped it so it, the edges are square and everything if we go none, it will just add the images all together the way they are, and particularly since it was handheld, the edges are actually kind of rough. So if you like that look, you could use that, or if you wanted to crop it yourself later, you could use this. And finally, we have warp to fit, which is going to try to fill in the other edge, or try to fill in the edges uh, in different ways to make it kind of get the most real estate from the images that you shot. I'm going to set it back to crop for this image. Uh, you have the file size. Right now it's 100%. You can do it at 50% too, so there'll be less pixels. There are a lot of pixels in this image because uh, we've combined a bunch of images together to make it. And so it combines all of the pixels in each image minus the where it overlaps. And uh, I always add uh, the panoramic metadata on this, but you don't have to. I think by default it doesn't add it. So now we're going to save this. It's going to take a few minutes for it to do all the calculations and merge all the images together. And it takes longer depending on the number of megapixels in the original images that you shot and uh, how many images that you have. All right, now that we've combined all the images, you can see that it's combined it into a panorama. And what you can do is you can uh, edit this later or you can export it into uh, different sizes to reduce the resolution. The resolution of this image is really uh, high at this point. This image is actually 394 megapixels combined because of the size of the original photographs were each I think 24 megapixels and once it combined all the information it ended up being 394. 
So now if we go back and uh, do this again, we're going to do it this time so that we do multiple rows. And so this will be two rows I'm subtracting. This one is actually the panorama we just created, so I'm leaving that out of this merge. And so we're going to merge these together uh, in two rows to see what happens. And so if we right click on here again and we say create panorama, so we're going to um, leave uh, the rest of these like this and we're going to go down here where it says 100%. In this case I'm going to go to 50% to reduce the number of pixels in the final image because as you saw in the last image we got 394 megabytes and uh, so if we combine two rows it, it may be six or seven hundred megabytes. We didn't really do much in this image except add pavement down here because we, we took a row that was overlapping just in front of it. But a lot of times if you wanted the foreground there might be something more interesting than pavement in the foreground. And so then once uh, we've stitch this together how we want and we've changed the other factors like I showed you on the earlier uh, panorama we can go save and get a final image then we can look at the final image here and so we have a final image and it actually ended up a lot smaller it's only 175 megabytes even with two rows and that's probably because the overlap didn't make the picture that much bigger. It, it's not actually two rows uh, high. It's probably like about one and a half with this pavement. And the pavement doesn't add that much information because it's uh, there's not much going on on the pavement. So that's how you combine into a panoramic view in On One. I'm Dean, and this is, has been Photo Blue, and I will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like.